Okay. Here we go. Hello everyone, my name is Arturo. Welcome back to Canada, the true north. Strong and free. It's time to summarize the 2015 MLS season before we continue on to the 2016 season. And our featured match today will be our first preseason friendly. Should be a fun way to see how the squad is shaping up. But first things first, we have to do a quick check-in on YouTube where I do respond to every single comment, or at least I read it. I don't upgrade, I haven't upgraded to G plus or whatever the heck it is, because it seems like a silly idea. But uh, Jorge Mendoza, uh, one of the co-hosts of the From the Backline podcast, corrects me that in Mexico, it is pronounced Vucetich, as I was incorrectly pronouncing the name of the Los Angeles coach. Thank you, Jorge. Much appreciated, buddy. He also says Uruguayans are known as Charulas. Hopefully that's not offensive. Thank you, Jorge. Back to the game. As you can see, that's how it finished in the West and the East. You saw that, of course. That I managed to win that wild card match against LA. Orlando, New York, DC, New England, and Chicago was the East. Again, the game seems to like the expansion sides. In the real world, it's uh, it's not quite that. Still, uh, finishing eighth in Sporter Shields represented a new record for Vancouver, so very happy to set that. Sporting winning the Shield, uh, just barely over San Jose, so uh, very nice there. In the playoffs, oh, that was headlines, isn't it? Let's try that again. Uh, in the playoffs, of course, in the wild card, uh, New England beats Chicago 2-1. Vancouver beats New England, Los Angeles on penalties. Vancouver over LA on penalties 2-2. In the Eastern Conference, in the semis, Orlando and New York survived their respective series. New York actually coming back. They were down 2-1 to DC, turned around with a 3-1 win, win 4-3 on aggregate, and Orlando just thumps on New England. That draw holding serve for them. Come on, game. Help me out here. In the West. Well, we all know what happened there. Sporting. 2-1 on aggregate. I made him work for it, though. Very happy to have done that to the Supporter Shield winners. San Jose on penalties. Advancing over RSL. In the Eastern Final. Orlando. 4-3 over New York City to go to their first MLS Cup Final in their first year of existence. And in the West, the Supporter Shield winners. Sporting Kansas City. 2-0, 4-1 on aggregate over San Jose, which means in the finals in MLS Cup, Sporting do the double, the Supporter Shield and MLS Cup, 3-1 over Orlando City. Sporting are your 2015 double champions. Congrats to Sporting. Elsewhere in the postseason, we go to the awards. Deshaun Brown wins Comeback Player of the Year. Goalkeeper of the Year went to Luis Marin. Defender of the Year, Fabricio. In the best 11, Adam Lassiguarasi, Nick Hagelin, Eric Zavaleta, Matt Beasler, Kai Kamara, Javier Morales, Maro Diaz, Christian Steindorsen, interesting, Matisse Perez garcia Innocent Imegara, and David Villa. I tell you, those San Jose, if San Jose does actually hit their potential in real life like they do in FM, watch out. Dom Kinnear has a dynasty on his hands, I guarantee it. Uh, coach of the year, I wasn't even in the top three, but Martin Rennie, hilariously, was in third with, with uh, DC United. Peter Vermees, unsurprisingly, you win the double, that's going to help you out quite nicely. Uh, goal of the year went to Fabricio for his long-range curling shot by a defender. That'll help. Golden Boot went to Innocent Emagara with 30, or 25 goals and 37 appearances. Very nice indeed. Uh, not quite at the 27 that Chris Wanderlust scored, tying Rocket Roy Lasseter for the all-time single-season record in Major League Soccer. Newcomer of the year, that went to Innocent Emagara. Not a shocker there. Beating out David Villa and Christian Nemeth. Two excellent shouts there. Rookie of the Year went to Greg Schaefer over Andrew Wilson and Jeff Adams. I don't know how Paul Tobin was not in the top three for this. Tobin had a great rookie season, but eh, what do I know? He actually graduated from his Generation Adidas class. I don't know how he didn't get over them. Clear bias. Clear bias. Uh, humanitarian of the Year went to Nick Romando over Ricardo Clark and Drew Moore. Referee of the Year went to Jorge Gonzalez over Jaya Marufo and Alan Kelly, which I find hilarious. MVP, David Villa over Jovinko and Kenny Cooper. Individual fair play went to Carlos Rivas over Breck Shea and Jao Plata. And the team fair play went to Vancouver. Hey, we were the most sportsmanlike team of the year. Woo, go us, I think. Yay. Uh, yeah, so that was, a, that was the year in a nutshell. Pretty darn good, if I do say so myself, that we managed to get to the playoffs, the, the you know, playoffs proper, not just the wildcard round, proving that this uh, is, a, is a workable thing. Having a pro-Canadian side can result 
in a competitive team. That was always the goal. That was always the goal. Uh, I am curious now. I do want to see what Tobin's average form was last season. Yes, yeah, 7.08 in his last five. His seasonal form, if we look at just Major League Soccer, his average rating was 7.06. How on earth did that not put him in Rookie of the Year? Unbelievable. The media are calling him the next Gucci Onyewu. Apparently, he's still going to get Rookie of the Year. What a joke. Anyway, let's take a look at what else was happening in Major League Soccer during the rest of the season here. As we go to the transfer list, uh, the 2015 season ended. With a whole bunch of people getting dumped from their clubs. Uh, yeah, there we go. So that was the uh, the end there. Of course, now also we brought in. That was the last thing before the, uh, the roster freeze. 2016 started off. Whole bunch of people getting waived after the waiver draft, including Antonio Rego and Riley O'Neill for us. Tons of people leaving their clubs. Thomas McNamara, surprisingly, uh, waived by New York City FC. I guess they didn't like the uh, salary that he was attached to. Mark Sherrod gone from San Jose. Uh, Pedro Ribeiro from Orlando City. Yeah, but other than that, it's about what you expect from the drafts. Matt Hawthorne, Edson Moran, Colin Herrera, Carl Wyshynski, Joe Nasco, and Akira Fitzgerald survived. Uh, and then there were some, you know, you bring in the kids from your academies. You saw that quite a bit of that as these new gens are brought in. Uh, we actually went ahead. There's some uh, very interesting uh, drafts here from the second round of drafting. Jake Gleason, Matt Lampson, Josh Ford, Joe Willis, Tim Murray, Tim Milia, Eric Avila, Connor Doyle, all brought in on the next round of drafting. Alonso Guadarrama, that should be a fun new gen for DC, but we got Chris Twardek finally from Millwall. We, they put him on loan. We said, yeah, yeah, we'll take him. So Twardek will be with us for this season. We'll see if we can convince him to join Canada while he's at it. We did bring up three kids from our residency. Steve Pander, Jordan Sajan, and Michael Jordan all brought up. Uh, Caleb... And Damon Furness brought in on freeze. And then came the mass free transferring off. David Estrada, gone. That was a bit of a shocker. Justin Merrim, gone. That was a bit of a shocker. Paul Nagamora, Michael Nanchoff, Brandon Barglage, Dan Gargan, Todd Donovan, Devin Sandoval, Jaime Alave, Brad Davis was sent out on a free. That blew my mind that Houston was willing to cut him. I guess his 8,000 a week salary just didn't fit inside their, their, their model. But that, that was a shocker that Jaime Alave and Brad Davis would be cut. By their respective sides. Uh, some moves there on the free transfer market. Some academy move. Uh, we actually uh, brought in Gaston Fernandez on a free. Just figured, hey, maybe we can get him on a... Maybe we could get him on a... Uh, you know. Uh, we actually made it was a trade from Portland, I believe. But ultimately, uh, he would not sign for a reasonable wage if we cut him. Leo Gonzalez and Fred both cut. Jairo Arrieta cut. Uh, Johnny Leveron refused to re-sign with us. He's gone. Gersh, Octavio, and Luis Cavalini make their long-awaited moves, and we get a little bit of cash for it. Uh, and then, uh, Brad Davis, we went and picked him up. Because I tell you right now, Brad Davis, for 3200 a week, is a veteran presence with all that ability. Why wouldn't I have that kind of a veteran on my team? Why would I not put Brad Davis on? So he will be very, very glad to have him. And of course, you had your usual uh, bring in the kids. But that wasn't the only one from Super Draft. We'll get to Super Draft in a second here. I won't spoil that too much. Uh, the one thing I want to show up is the history of trades. Because those, for some reason, are separate trades. All right. So, yeah, there was uh, quite a bit of uh, wheeling and dealing going on. People changing sides. As you can see, Vincent Noguera is now going to NYCFC for picks. Like Maurice Williams. Will Bruin is now a uh, member of the New York Red Bulls. AJ De La Garza is now with Chicago Fire. Clarence Goodson is now DC United. Evan Bush is with Houston. Ethan Finley is with the Red Bulls. Stupid Ethan Finley. Stupid Orlando. Waylon Francis has gone back to Philly. I say back, I think he was ever with Philly. I correct myself there. He's with Philly. Lamar Nagel's with Houston. Luis Silva and Kellen Rowe are now with Houston. Houston is loading up. Houston is loading up for something big. Warren Craval's with New York City FC. There's been a lot of wheeling and dealing. This has been a crazy, crazy offseason. Baki Sumari uh, goes back to the impact. Aurelian Kalan is now with RSL. I guess that's to replace uh, the loss of Hymas and Alave. Makes sense. Eric Kronberg to Columbus. Clint Irwin to New York City FC. That improves their fortunes and goal immediately. Andres Romero to FC Dallas. Harry Ship to Seattle. Tally Hall to the impact. Everybody's just jumping around here. Kofi Apari to Columbus. Ricketts to New York City FC. 
It's been quite the quite the off season of trades. Crazy, crazy times all around. Meanwhile, back with me very specifically. Now you may those of you who watch these live streams on twitch.tv slash Rotoro, you may be confused as to why I'm with Vancouver. If you only watch these episodes on YouTube, you're probably not too concerned about me being with Vancouver. But if you watch the live streams, you know that there was a takeover. And in that takeover, Chinese investor Zhao Shun and his American consortium, Connor Taylor, Ryan Seitz, Kevin Akin, and Jeff Mitchell, wanted me out in place of Bruce Arena. In the live stream, I was fired. My last save was after the last episode, as it always is. So when I went back in today to, to uh, use the in-game editor to move myself over to Montreal to keep this file going, it turns out that upon second thought, Zhao Shun had not fired me. We got to that exact same point where I was fired, and he went, eh, actually, let's keep you on instead. So uh, I'm still here, and I am very happy for that. Which means I can do something crazy, like, I don't know, get Tijuana as my new affiliate. That's right. As my junior. I am the senior here. They are the junior. Not only do I get to send players on loan to Mexico, I get first crack at any of the people coming out of them, be that uh, their academy, be it their first team players, I get first look at them, which is going to be fantastic. If I can pick up some kids, get them Canadian residency out of, you know, the Mexican system, that would be amazing. would love to get a crack at it. So very shocked and happy that we got uh, Zolos Tijuana as our new affiliate club. Can we get a senior affiliate, I wonder? Uh, okay... Uh, da, da, da. Oh, hey, look at that. We get a senior affiliate too. Lovely. You never know. Maybe we can get a, maybe we can get a, another club to pull some players in from. Maybe a few Canadians. You never know. You never know. Maybe it'll cancel out the, uh, the Tijuana cost. Anyway, moving on. Uh, with that takeover, uh, the board did two things. One, they upgraded our youth facilities immediately. They dropped 22 million immediately on a upgrade to our youth facility. So right now, we are looking pretty solid. Top youth facilities, excellent junior coaching, well-established youth recruitment. We are looking pretty darn solid. Their training facilities are the only thing, really, that need to be upgraded. And, uh, you know, average is okay, but they could get better. They also installed under-soil heating. So that is very nice. Not that we really needed it. I mean, it's turf. But uh, they was convinced he was going to pay for it. And if our investor wants to buy under-soil heating, by golly, let him buy under-soil heating. Oh, uh, well. As I mentioned, if we go to a quick squad recap here, uh, Paul Tobin did graduate from uh, Generation Adidas. So he's now, we're paying the brunt of his fifty-seven fifty a week. I had to renew his contract, of course. You may notice a lot of people are unhappy with me. Borean is still unhappy that he hasn't been moved. I've tried. And a lot of people are very unhappy that Octavio Rivera was let go. Now, you all recall how horrible his performance was. Pedro Morales was very upset because he thought he was a good player. And sure, he was a good player, was Octavio Rivera, but he did not perform. Morales didn't like that response and started a locker room revolt. And I had to convince a lot of people to calm the F down that all was going to be well. And only just now are they starting to come around to that idea. So I'm very upset. I'm very upset that they had that reaction. But hopefully we can find some good people to bring in and alleviate their concern. I'm trying to find a good top-tier striker. But uh, nothing as of yet. And even if I don't, I've got Laurent Mori. He's on loan for another year. And I will ride that horse to the finish line if I have to. Because Laurent's got a ton of potential and I want him to realize it. I promised to look at the Super Draft. So let's go do that now. Uh, oh, Super Simulator has begun. Very good. Thank you very much. Let's go to the Super Draft. Oh, really? Okay. Let's go to the... Soup, not transfers, draft. Really? All right. Well, let's go to the Super Draft then, shall we? Uh, ba, 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 ba. All transfers. All right, so in the Super Draft, quite a lot of fun stuff had went down. Let's start with the original Super Draft here. And we find... On January 7th, a lot of players were brought in. I did what I did last year. I moved all my picks to get the top overall. And I got Craig Hanlon from the Northern Virginia Royals. 
pretty good potential for an attacking midfielder. Pretty good base stats. He's going to need some time to develop. But on the whole, not too shabby. He's also a GA, which comes to that 3.8 a week price tag. So, eh, not overly excited about the 3.8. However, that wasn't the only move we made. I did, of course, loan out C. Panda, Michael Jordan, Kevin Kambar, and Jordan Sajan to get them experience wherever I could, as one does. I also made a pick in the supplemental draft. And again, I moved all my supplemental drafts picks to get the first overall pick so I could have the best of what was left. And my pick was from the San Jose U23 side, Liam Flynn. A target man. 17 finishing is not bad for a target man. Not bad at all. Could be a good depth pick for us. Again, the idea will be here to send him out. Get him some, uh... Get him some experience. See if he turns into something. Maybe move him on. You never know. Indeed, he is with the U23s right now. Also, Nikola Paunik and Ethan Sampson have been mutually terminated because they were horrible. And Kakuta Mane. Kakuta Mane! He's with Solos. He is the first person to take advantage of our affiliation with the big Mexican side. Hopefully he can get some valuable experience and help his development get us above that two-star. I have hope. And goodness knows, since I have Twardak here, there's going to be a fight for that position on the pitch. Hopefully that will alleviate some of that pressure in that area of the park. Now there's one other thing I want to point out here before we get started into today's uh, featured match against Cruz Azul Hidalgo. One other very important thing. Gershon Kofi, before he left, was capped by the Canadian national team. Which means he should be playing for Canada going forward as he gets experience in Cyprus. Should be fun. Doesn't help me, though. Though you will see a Canadian flag in the corner. The reason I say Gersh doesn't help is because he's over the age of 23. That's right. I am in charge of the Olympic side. Woo! I'm taking Canada to the Olympics. However, we have a problem. I have no support staff, and try as I might, nobody, and I mean nobody, wants to be my assistant coach. This is a problem. A deep, deep, deep problem. Let's try this guy. Maybe he'll want to be my assistant coach. I doubt it, but I have a deep problem with people not wanting to be <laughs> my assistant coach. So I'm hoping, 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 hoping at some point before the Olympics, somebody will agree to be my coach. Because right now it's not working. And I'm kind of worried about that. Anyway, the squad that I have built for the 23s so far is pretty good. It's very Vancouver heavy, as you might expect. Marco Carducci, Michael Viscosi, Daniil Henry, Luca Gasparato, Sam Atacube, Tyler Findlay, Spencer Franzo, Paco Deckers, Clement Blanchard, who's actually looking, you know, not too shabby for the impact. So we'll give him a shot. Jordan Hamilton, Laurent Mori, Christian Kaiwastam, who is a very good prospect out of FC Edmonton, so get him some experience. Jordan Murrell, Bryce Alderson, Fraser Aaron, Michael Petrasso, Dylan Carrero, Kyle Laren, Caleb Clark, Callum Ferguson, Jay Chapman, Carmine Lord, who could be worth something out of the TFC Academy, and Jordan Sajan. So I think we should have a half decent side. Look how young this U23 side is, too, and I know a lot of these kids. I played with them, they're good. We should hopefully at least do well. It's going to be a tough group, though. Costa Rica, El Salvador, and Mexico. That's a tough, tough group. Cross our fingers. We can get second out of that one. Cross your fingers, everybody. But for now, let's get into our first preseason match of the season. Oh, it should be a good one. Cruz Azul Hidalgo versus Vancouver. All I want is for us to get through this injury-free. see how we do. You've been in charge for two years. That's great. Well done. Good for you. And with our 4 2 3 1 against a high and narrow 4 2 3 1. Roque Santa Cruz. Very good. And away we go. Vancouver in their white. Cruz Azul Hidalgo in their blue and white. Jamal with the set piece goal predicts Twitch chat. That might be difficult. Jamal Wood is horrible. I don't think he's going to survive the March waiver, though. I'll tell you that right now. He will probably not survive the March waiver. Neither will Christian Dean, for that matter. I got to start cutting uh, squad spaces and salary. Laurent Mori with the quick goal a minute in. Thank you very much, youngster. Great assist there from Bryce Alderson. As he and Tyler Finley with Sam Payette, who we've activated the future clause in his contract, his loan contract, so... 
when his loan expires for 550,000, he will be moving. Hopefully, he will not be as big a bust as Cavallini was. Hopefully, he won't be as big a bust initially as Lucas Beaker was. You can see Beaker is actually playing this match. He's starting. He's over his ACL or MCL tear, whatever the heck it was. It was a CL tear. As we hope to salvage his career. I'll tell you right now, though. Uh, Jordan Murrell. Now that I have Ashton Morgan and Lucas Beaker in here. It's the end of the line for Jordan Muriel. I've had enough of his shenanigans. He's getting out of here as fast as I can get rid of him. Viscosi and Atacora will be my right back solution. More Viscosi than Atacora. I won't lie, I would like a third option as like a, a desperation pick. And might even be, I might get Tim Parker. Now that I say that, I might have Tim Parker train it right back a little heavily. Just so I can have him available. Because you just never know when you're going to need a, a desperation right back. I'd rather have one that is trained than one that is not. I was looking for Mori. No dice. Lara. Brought down by Tobin. No call. That could have been dangerous. Jimenez. Borjan swats it away. Well done. I still have Borjan. He still wears the captain's armband. He is still... I He is tutoring with... He's not tutoring Carucci anymore. But that... Tutoring session went so well. Carducci is primed to take over for him. Four-star keeper with potential. I am actually cool now with losing Borgon. If, if someone does put in an offer for him, I'm absolutely fine with that. He moves on. I've got Carducci. I've got Thomas. Seijan is out on loan. I can recall him at any time. So I'm not worried at all. Ah, oh, come on, Finley. The whole point of this is to get through without suffering an injury. You've already fallen down on that front. All right, Payette. Please don't let that be a serious injury. Tyler Findlay is a massive prospect for us. Injuries all over the place. It's supposed to be a friendly. What's with all the injuries? No! Stop getting knocks! I'm not happy. Rituro not happy. Good save by Borja. Rituro happy. Tell you what. They're going to knock our players. You know what? I'm not even going to try to be the bigger person. It's time to break some ankles. You went and hurt my star midfielder. Here's what I got to say about that. Kick him in the junk. All right, let's bring on the B team here. Uh, that'll be Carducci, Atacora, Parker, Dean, Morgan, Jamal Wood, whiny pants, Twardek, Bustos, Davis, and Bunbury. Go, boys, go. A good bit of fitness for everybody. The the horrible thing about MLS is, uh, you know, it's uh, the way they lose their match fitness so quickly. Uh, you gotta, you have to play as many people as possible. Twitch chat already giving a voice to Jamal Wood, who's seen all these injuries, and he's got a rather concerned look on his face. Uh, coach, uh, you know, um. There's a lot of people getting injured, so, uh, really, uh, I should be going in because, you know, uh, obviously you don't care about me, so, uh, if I get injured, it's not a bad thing, uh, but I mean, obviously I won't get injured because I, I have legs with titanium. I, I, see, I secretly had titanium surgery, and, uh, I, I should really be playing more. Listen, Jamal Wood. You are a whiner. You're incompetent. You cost way too much. And you're right, I wouldn't be upset if you got injured. Because you are getting waived in March. That is the end of it right there. You are being cut from this team. And your career in North America will likely, if not be over, be dealt a serious blow. 
So I am going to play you. Put you in the shop window for what that's worth. And then we're getting rid of you. Goodbye, Jamal Wood. You will not be missed. And scene. Meanwhile, back on the pitch, still 1-0 Vancouver. B-team holding up quite nicely. Average ratings across the board. Very happy. Pyatt has himself a yellow card. Not so happy about that. Bustos now. Oh, nice ball to the center. Twardek saved! Great chance there by Twardek. Put it up high and the keeper had to be sharp to get there. Some substitutes now for Hidalgo. We're being outshot 13 to 4. Should be pointed out. Carducci spills it! But recovers nicely. Covers very nicely. And gets lucky with an offside call there. Twardek flicks the ball on from the right. Nothing really more there. Zerdo. Mendoza. Saved by Carducci. You see, you see what I mean about Carducci? He's ready to go. He's got first team written all over him. I would love to get rid of of Bordeaux for a good price. He's got a $3 million release clause. If someone offers me 3 mil, I will not shed a tear. If they offer me less, I'll be a little bit upset. But the point is this. Give me a good price for Borion. I will not be upset. Namely because a good price for Borion means uh, more money I can spend when it's finding a top-tier striker. Atiba Hutchinson, I should point out, my, my white whale, as it were. Suffered a pretty serious injury over in Turkey, so he is no longer a target for us. Sad to see uh, Tiba Hutchinson injured like that. So our search for top talent continues. Karichi with a good grab there. More substitutions from Cruz Azul Hidalgo. This defense does their job to preserve this 1-0 lead. Our hope here is that the injury to... Nice save by Carducci. Our hope here is that the injury to Tyler Findlay is not a serious one. It's just a, a one-game knock, maybe a stubbed toe, maybe a gashed arm. That'd be nice. What the card looks like. Indeed it is, Raul Varela. Three minutes of stoppage time. Is there a late equalizer? Uh, Evan Lava Bunbury. There's nobody defending this. Nobody defended. Everybody went forward, and Gutierrez had to be quick off his line to stop Bunbury, who would have been in all alone. Like he was, but Twardek now on the run. Can't get past Garcia Sancho. Atacora, though, gets to the ball first. Inside for Bustos. Atacora. Twardek. Brought down. No call. Zurdo. Inside for Mendoza. Zerdo. Oh, cleared. More substitutions coming in here for Hidalgo. Will they be defeated in this start to the preseason campaign? Bustos. Shanked clearance. Not his best. Mendoza goes back. Was that a wise decision? It was not. The back passes aren't the right thing to be doing. Referee won't blow the whistle. Now he will. Good start to the preseason campaign. Yes, indeed we do. A 1-0 win on the road in Mexico. I'm quite happy with that. That was, uh, yeah. Well done, everybody. A win is a good performance, and it's a great start to our preseason campaign. Next time on Strong and Free will be the opening of the 2016 Major League Soccer season. Oh, I declined the roll. Boo. And, oh, yes, I tried to get him. Boo, but he's not coming with me. That's a shame. Next time on Strong and Free, we start the 2016 Major League Soccer season against da -da 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 -da, the New York Red Bulls. Should be a fun one. 
My name is Arturo. Thank you for watching, everybody. If you like what you've seen, please don't forget to like comment, subscribe, favorite, share, tell all your friends about these videos on YouTube, and come join us live on twitch.tv slash Arturo, where all these episodes are recorded for the infinite criticism of lovely people in Twitch chat. Love you all. My name is Arturo. This is Tr Strong and Free taking place in Canada. That's why it's Strong and Free. See you next time, everybody.